an appetite to see that learning process through. Um, and I think the current market and the activity levels will enable more and more of that. But is that primarily for engineering straight valuation? It's mainly for uh, property management skills, okay. FM okay. skills, property management, and then growing into valuations and, and then actually being interested in going through the qualification process to become a professional. Yeah, that's good. And I take it that we have an equal number of girls as we do boys? Yes? Very important, because you will find that girls are generally much harder working, more dedicated, more committed. <laughs> Let's fly that flag. Let's have more girls here, please. Um, Wael, what about you? Does your organization do much with interns? Um, yeah, we do. We have several programs. We have some that are uh, focused on the local communities where we operate, and those are either short-term internships or programs that lead to employment within our hotels from the construction phase into uh, the, uh, the asset management or rather the operation phase. We do the usual summer internships with the, uh, with the universities where we bring in uh, you know, eager girls and boys who spend time with us through a, a very structured program and they, they're, they actually have to work for it. It's not a come in if you like, you know, we'll give you an allowance at the end. We, we kick them out if they're not serious because, you know, they're wasting our time and their, their, their time. So we do that. And then we have a, a program for young managers who join the, uh, the organization, obviously, if, if they continue a more senior management uh, program. Uh, it's, it's not, we haven't had issues bringing people in. I mean, we recently had an ad for eight positions and we had about 1,600 applicants, so about 200 per position. Um, the issue is keeping them motivated and carrying on within the, 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 the sector. And really where we've faced issues is technically, as, as Hassan was saying, we don't have issues of getting good technical graduates. Is how do you build, how do you de uh, build up your business acumen as a developer? Mm -hmm. So this is a piece of land. What's the best usage? Why would you do this? Yes, I know you can figure out the structural. You know, can I put six floors or ten floors, and how much concrete do I need? But really, should I build a hotel or a hospital or a school? What should I do? What sort of design would work? What sort of markets? And that's where it's taken us a while to build up that development yes. expertise, as yeah. opposed to just project management expertise, mm -hmm. which you can buy in or you can develop very. Yeah. Yes, quickly. And that's, yeah. that's yeah. been our, yeah. I won't say struggle, it's been our challenge and yeah. it's, it's our passion and that's what we're, we're working with and we have some shining examples. Mm -hmm. And others who still feel that we're being unfair to them because we're just not promoting them fast enough because they're very good engineers with good degrees from good schools. Mm -hmm. And it's bringing in this development concept into the market uh, when, you know, even the word developer in Arabic, mutawwar, is, is, is not fully understood. And mm. you know, as Hassan was mm. saying, are you a contractor? Are you a construction? Yeah. Even the Ministry of Manpower sometimes struggles to understand what is a developer. Mm. Although, let's face it, if we have willing workers, we're halfway. It's, it's where we've got youngsters who don't feel the need and don't have the interest, and then we've got a real crisis. So do we have any other questions? Oh, please. Ali Habib from Al Habib Group. I'm directing my question to Sa'in. Uh, how do a foreign investor uh, look to the following point in Oman? Uh, when he goes anywhere else and invests in buying a property, uh, he expects two types of, of gains. One is the, uh, the price appreciation and one is the rental yield. Whereas in Oman, we hardly see a normal price appreciation. We very much value our properties on the basis of rental yield. I think it's a very good question and, and, and one that needs to be addressed based on the increased uh, interest in foreign investment coming into Oman. <clears throat> what I'm seeing more and more of in answer to your question in a, in a holistic uh, approach is, is, is a long-term view of the market. Uh, looking at, uh, at, at the profile of, of, of different, different land sectors, uh, both in Muscat and, and wider Oman, and, and considering the potential of use of developing out on those plots in the medium term. Residual value of those, of those land plots is key to that, and committing to what is sometimes slightly overvalued in the local market for the longer term play. As I said in, in, in my retail presentation, the key is to be reasonable in, 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 in the rental ask when the completed building comes to market, whether it's an industrial unit, whether it's a, a shopping mall or an office park, um, because that will create 
asset value and balance sheet value in the medium term um, rather than looking for short-term rental gain on yield. So I think the approach that I'm seeing certainly from golf-based funds coming in as well as wider international investors is what is the medium to long-term play in Oman and how can we commit to that by building out good assets for long-term asset balance sheet value play? Uh, I think it's always, uh, it's also a function of demand and supply. See, let's take the market into say commercial and residential. Lands we know, or lands are appreciating in Oman, so we, uh, if you agree with me, lands are always appreciating. That's why people always like to invest in lands, because they always appreciate. Uh, when we talk about ready-made properties, today what's happening, the reality of today's market, we just take what is the income, we discount, and that's the valuation of the uh, property. If it's a long-term lease, you discount on a lower rate, and that's you, your prime. Okay. Now, it comes to the demand and supply. Today, let's take, for example, the residential market. Why the prices of wave are increasing? Why we see capital gain in the wave? Wave Muscat is not a second in capital, if Asim, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And today, if you bought a two-bedroom apartment in the phase which was probably like released two years ago or three years ago, today you maybe make 20%, 15%, something like that. So there is a capital gain in wave because, again, you have a limited property, so supply is less. And people are willing to accept lower return on the yields, rental yields, because it's been compensated by two things. Why, why is the liquidity that if you put a property for sale in the wave, not, of course, we have the 80-20 rule, so you won't expect 100% of them have the same liquidity positioning. But they are li more liquid than other uh, properties, and do they, they do notice capital gain. That's from this. But uh, why, for example, a property in London, a property in Dubai, for example, in the, uh, uh, in the um, other area, they are increasing? Because, again, it's a demand. In Oman, other around, today, for example, you have, say, villas in Al Amarat. Why is it not appreciating? Because the barriers to entry are not there. Anyone can go to any engineering consultant, pay him 600 riyals. He'll make sketches for him. He'll find a contractor who will charge him 120, 140 riyal per square meter. And he'll get his uh, house done. So why should I go and find from the market? Because uh, there are no barriers for entry. But in, in, in other countries, if you're, for example, more sophisticated uh, markets, for you to just go through the process of a development, let it be a small villa, that takes a lot of energy. It takes, uh, and the resources are scarce. And the, for example, the fee today we're going to pay for an uh, engineering consultant is not be 600 drums if you go to some countries. You're going to pay much more. So I mean, you might pay 20 or 25% of your total budget of a house in Oman, a small, I'm talking about budget houses. So I think those reasons, uh, but, if, but uh, what, what, we for, uh, what I foresee in the future in the five, 10 years, there will be some areas where you will see capital gains. And people will be start accepting lower returns on the yields, which will automatically create a capital lead. So just in parallel with the economy. When the economy grows, you know, suddenly then prices went, goes up like that. So today, uh, I'm talking about the barren lands. And lands only. Barren lands, yes. I mean, they are exactly going very much in tandem with the economy growth. You know, they were at a certain uh, level. The economy grown at so much level, yep. three times, the prices of land also went three times. But this is not the case with the uh, built uh, properties. Yeah, because, uh, because the lands, especially if you're talking about commercial lands, uh, at the end of the day, what happens, the more people enter the country, you need more apartments uh, for, for them to, you need more uh, housing for them, as simple as that. So more infrastructure, more government expenditure, as uh, Salman has mentioned, that is still the government public uh, projects are the main driving force for the entire economy. So that we know all, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's, a co uh, that's a direct correlation, you know? Yeah. Okay. So we can continue the discussions over some lunch. Is that all right? Is it a very quick question? Come on, then. What's your very quick question? The question is uh, to Wael. Okay, I think over the past few years, we have uh, seen uh, um, very successful developers who have uh, shown commitment and they managed to deliver. And uh, meanwhile, as well, we have seen some other who have been serious 
They managed to get uh, some government contracts for lands. Unfortunately, they never touched anything for years. Um, my question is, I think we have now uh, very capable developers who are looking for opportunities. Uh, however, they are lacking uh, some support, maybe from the government, for lands and areas where they can put their capabilities, whether it's investment, financial investments, whether it's resources, into developing these areas. I'm not sure whether Amran is putting into its account uh, any plan into capitalizing on those developers who have proved themselves in the market and giving them further opportunities to be a partner with the government into developing new opportunities in the market? Yeah. It's a very good question, Asim. Awesome. Um, I work for government-owned companies, but I don't represent the government, so whatever I say is Amran's view, not necessarily the government's. Um, I think there is, a, there is a, a dichotomy in the market here between uh, small developers who have to go and buy land at you know, market prices uh, and between large tracts of land that are given to international uh, investors at uh, token value, uh, really to entice them to come into Oman. Um, and the reason for that has been the ITC experiment, if I can call it that, the idea of um, entrusting Omani developers, uh, you know, back in 2004, when this thing started, 2003, Muscat Hills, 2004, uh, the wave and, and, and so on, was the ability wasn't there, the financial ability, the technical ability, and, and, and actually the trust of the Omanis in their own market was lacking. I mean, I, I remember when we were promoting the wave in 2004, the Omani developers laughed at us. They said, this is just a pipe dream. No one would come and buy houses at these sort of rates, and you're crazy, and you know, there isn't even a Ministry of Tourism, and then who would want to play golf in Oman, and, and so on and so forth. So I think there were reasons for this back then, uh, while international developers said, we'd love to do this, and we will, and they have come in, and so on. Unfortunately, that experiment has been affected by the huge impact of the financial crisis be it the developers from particular regions have been affected in their home markets, so liquidities have been hit. The Arab uh, Spring has affected some of our partners. Uh, while the Omani market has become more sophisticated, grown in, in ability and, and willingness and less, less risk averse as they used to uh, be. And the, the, the discussions we have with the Ministry of Tourism and what we've encouraged them to look at is participation of more Omani developers in, in our developments. Uh, where you don't really need an international developer. There's no knowledge transfer. There's nothing very sophisticated that you're trying to build, and you could, uh, you could give that opportunity to the local market. So I agree, it does cause a bit of a, uh, a skew in the market between you having as a small developer to pay full market price versus someone who could afford to pay that, yet being given land. But that really was the concept. These were about you know, large uh, mixed-use developments that needed a particular uh, expertise. Some have materialized and, and have been done very well. Others, because of all these international crises. And the bank's uh, lack of willingness to finance a few years ago, when the banks were just kicking us out of the doors as, as soon as we said real estate, ITC, freehold, international sales, they're like, this model's broken, we're not talking to you. They are again now. They're now calling us, so the tables have turned, I think. Uh, but I agree, and one of the things we're working on uh, is, is a local fund to allow local developers to come in and, and support some of our uh, profitable projects, because we also take on non-profitable strategic projects for the governments in, in areas that are not really of interest to, to developers. So I, I think that is definitely the direction, and the public sentiment and pressure on the government will force them to ensure that uh, the, the Omani developers uh, get the, the, the first, uh, first call. But really, they have to believe in it. I mean, it all comes down to trusting your own markets and believing in it, not al allowing others to come in. Look at most of our malls. They're being developed by international developers. Look at Salala. The first mall that opened is being developed by someone else. So we continue to say, give us the opportunity, yet it's others who come in and say, I, I really see something in this, uh, in this market. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop us all there and say thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Lunch will be served. We've learned quite a few things. One message has been echoed repeatedly from the very beginning of the day all the way through is that we do need regulation, we do need laws, we need transparency. Very clearly there needs to be a data bank where information on lifetime and real transactions as opposed to what someone would like to achieve or what has actually been achieved So through the lands registration. The details of what's actually been paid for sales needs to be recorded and made available. 
rental leases should probably also be recorded and the data be available. We know that the ITC um, concept should be making an opportunity for the SMEs to come in there somewhere to start their own business and get involved. We feel we're at risk of oversaturation on retail and on high-end residential. Got those messages a couple of times. We know 